Are you feeling overwhelmed with the amount of students that you have inside of your martial arts school and need to hire another instructor? This video is for you. Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer Waters. I am the Sales and Systems Sensei. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today's video is all about what to do in order to hire your next best instructor. Now, the tips and the techniques that I'm gonna share with you are the same ones that we've utilized inside of our own flagship dojo that does over seven figures a year and what I recommend for our clients all over the world, all over the US, Canada, UK, Australia, you name it. We're giving them the same recommendations. So today, I thought it'd be fun if I just, you know, shared it with you. So here we go. The very first thing that you wanna think about is being able to hire from within. Now, I know, I know you've probably heard that somewhere else. Let me break down with you how we actually do it and how you can duplicate it. I want you to think about hiring as like farming. You know, I wanna plant a seed, I wanna water it, I wanna care for it, and then it's gonna eventually grow into this mighty plant. Well, it's the same thing with your instructors. Now, maybe you need a full-time instructor and you're like, okay, well, I need to groom somebody up to take that full-time position. How do I go about doing it? First of all, you need to think, do I really need a full-time instructor or do I just need somebody who can teach a few classes for me so that I can get off the mat and do what I need to do? And if you're trying to alleviate for any other reason other than to get off the mat to do a higher functioning task, then I would actually say it might be best to first look at your class schedule and see if you can solidify that and create a better flow before hiring somebody and committing to those wages, committing to you know paying them weekly. Do that first. But let's say you've already done that, you've optimized your class schedule, you're like, Jen, I gotta have help, I need an instructor. You gotta farm one. And so what that means is you'll need to create a leadership team. Now the leadership team can be volunteered or you can have a paid program for it. We prefer having a volunteer program. And this is where you're gonna cultivate leadership. You're actually gonna teach people how to be leaders. You're gonna teach them how to be volunteers. And you're gonna teach them how to teach martial arts the way that you do it. Not the way that they may have learned somewhere else, but the way that you do it. So first of all, have frequent leadership team meetings. Don't just say that somebody's in leadership and never teach them how to teach. You want them to come once a month, they need to do training, and then they actually need to be responsible for assisting in a certain class. That's a very, very important thing to do. The second thing that you also wanna do is after you've created that leadership team, you need to have some type of way to promote them within the leadership team to solidify and signify to them that they're at one stage of volunteer and now they've reached the next stage of volunteer and so on and so on. This is going to help them see the path to eventually becoming a paid team member. Now, once you've gotten all of those things in place, now over two years, over three years, you've probably cultivated some really good people and you're probably able to bring them on they might be going, did she just say two to three years? Yeah, I did. Because we want now to hire an instructor, but then we're frustrated if we go outside of our martial arts school and go hire an instructor. That's because you didn't grow them from within. So first of all, start now. If you think you can't wait for two or three years, maybe you can't. Maybe you have to hire somebody from the outside, but start this process now so that in three years when this is a problem again, you have somebody. And if you do this now, you won't regret it, I promise. But getting back to what do I do next? I found a candidate, maybe they're from the outside, maybe they've been grown from within. What do I do next to ensure that they really are a great fit? Well, I think the next thing that you've got to do is the same thing that we do inside of our flagship dojo. We have at least a two to three part interview process. Now I would say it's three parts if you're hiring somebody from the outside, but two parts at minimum if you're hiring them from within because you've gotten to know them. The one on the outside, let's say you're hiring somebody from the outside, first needs to be a Zoom call on your computer. You need to dive in to how personable that they are in that interview, ask some interview questions like their experience, have them show you video clips of them actually training in martial arts. All of those things need to occur during that interview so that you can qualify whether or not you actually want to move this person to your city or town and teach martial arts classes for you. And you need to qualify how serious they are. Are they going to be a good candidate based upon what you're willing to pay? The worst thing you could do is bring somebody from the outside and they don't even know what they're going to be paid. They have an expectation of what they're going to be paid, but you can't actually fulfill on that. 
So that's an important thing that you'll also want to consider as well. Now on the next two stages, you need to have an in-person interview. If this person's really serious, then you need to go ahead and have them come in person. Now, whether you fly them out or they're local, they're in your martial arts school, get them in person, ask them some really important questions, get the vibe back from them. You know, if they're coming from the outside, I would actually say that they need to have some type of martial arts demonstration of technique for you. You know, it aligns with what you're doing. If you were, let's say if you had a jujitsu school and you brought in a kickboxer who said they knew a little bit of jujitsu, well then you'd want to test their jujitsu capabilities. And likewise, vice versa, if it was flipped the other way, you'd want to test that out. So make sure that they have good martial arts training and then have them actually teach a small section like do a mock class. It doesn't have to be a huge one, but if you're hiring an instructor that's going to be leading classes, they actually need to do that mock class. They need to demonstrate that they know how to lead a class or how they would do that. If you have students, you can bring them in. Maybe some of your black belts come in and they have to teach that class. Is this going to take coordination and effort? Yes, it is. It's going to take coordination. It's going to take effort, but this is how you can actually source whether or not this person is a good candidate. And then the third part of the interview is really what we call a hiring interview. So this is where you're going through all all the tasks that this person is going to be responsible for. You're diving in. Like if you're going to have them cleaning the toilets and cleaning the bathroom, you're going to go show them what that actually looks like. If you're going to have them teaching classes, you're going to show them, hey, these are what our classes look like. This is the responsibility. This is how personable we are. These are the expectation on the admin side of things, what we expect for you to do. All of those things are very important things that you need to communicate before they say yes. And then the next thing that you also want to make sure that you don't skimp out on and that you communicate on that third interview is what your culture is like. So if you have a Disney World type culture where they have to have a certain haircut, maybe you limit tattoos, a smoke-free environment, no drugs, no alcohol, all of those things. If that's what you do, if that's what you stand for, then you've gotta let them know and they have to be willing to abide by that. They have to be willing to abide by your social media policies. They have to be willing to abide by how you would want them to represent you, which is what they're gonna be doing on the map. And if they can't do those things, then they're not the best candidate. So make sure you explain exactly what's gonna be involved. Now, the last piece of hiring that next best instructor is you need to have their first two weeks completely mapped out hour by hour. What are they doing in each hour? Who do they check in with? What are their tasks gonna be like? Are they shadowing in classes? Are they teaching sections of the class? Be very, very clear. Matter of fact, I would say that you should definitely try to over communicate during their first two weeks on the job, texting them, hey, don't forget, you're expected to be here at this time. We'll be ending at this time. This is who you need to check in with. These are the processes. All of that needs to happen in the first two weeks that they're on the job, okay? Then after that, they should have some expectations of what the job is like, and then at that point in time, they should be on a task list. Yes, a task list. Don't expect them to take the first two weeks that you've mapped out and then be like, okay, you got it, just do what you do. No, you have a task list for them of the things that they're responsible for and the outline of those tasks. You also can't abandon their training. They're still training. It's gonna take a full six months before they are pretty much doing the job that you outlined in the task list without having somebody watch over them. But if that's the case, if you got that training in place and they're able to do the training, you are going to have a very top notch instructor that's going to be there running your classes and helping you take on higher level tasks and take on higher level things. All right, guys, I hope that you got a ton of value out of this video. If you did, let me know in the comments what was the one piece of information that you're like, oh, that was a golden nugget. I love that. And I'm going to do that the next time I go hire an instructor. And while you're doing that, don't forget, hit that like button, smash subscribe. That way you get notified the next time a video like this lands on our channel. See you again next time, guys. Be awesome.